Good evening, it's a warm welcome to GRTS News with me, Winifred Nicole, but first, the headlines. Four new ambassadors present their letters of credence to the President, His Excellency, Adama Barrow. The Chief Executive Office of Guarantee Trust Bank shed light on local and foreign currency accounts of former President Jame and his wife. Deputies debate the 2017 Constitutional Review Commission Bill during a marathon session at the National Assembly Chambers. United Nations seeks renewal of its mandate amid sporadic fighting in parts of the country. And security concerns rise in Africa as Boko Haram pledges allegiance to ISIL terror group. Well, viewers, those are the headlines. Thanks for joining us. Four new ambassadors Monday morning presented letters of credence to His Excellency President Adam Abaro at State House. The ambassadors of South Korea, Switzerland, Namibia, Canada pledged to consolidate the existing bilateral relations between their respective countries and the Gambia, whilst also widening cooperation in different areas of cooperation. Well, that report by Momodu Jalo will come later in the news. The Vice President, Mrs. Fatima Jalo Tambajang, has arrived in Istanbul, Turkey, ahead of the Extra OIC Summit. The Vice President was received on arrival by the Vice Governor of Istanbul, Mr. Mehmet Ali Yulatas, and the Gambia's Ambassador to Turkey, Mr. Kemeseng Jame. The Gambian delegation to the summit include Mr. Demba Ali Jawa, Minister of Information, and other senior government officials. The one-day OIC summit, which opens on Wednesday, will be preceded by a ministerial and senior officials meeting on Tuesday. But that report by SR Jalo will come later in the news. The Chief Executive Officer of Guarantee Trust Bank on Monday reappeared at the Commission of Enquiry, investigating the public financial dealings of former President Yajame and his close associates. Mr. Bolaji Ayodeli was summoned to shed light on various local and foreign currency accounts belonging to Jame, his wife, and also um, details in that report. Testimony, Mr. Ayodele said the former president, his wife, and the Operation Save the Children Foundation in 2015-2016 upon different dollars, dollar, euro, and British pound accounts worth millions and thousands of their Ford mentioned currencies. Let's start with the accounts of Yahya Jami that you hold in your banks. How many accounts do you have for him? Uh, we have three accounts. The dollar C account, okay, then the dollar four account, the dollar account, the pounds and the euro account. Four, four accounts. Account, yes. Okay. All right. You can choose whichever you want. Let's start with one. Which is the oldest account? Uh, they were open at the same time. It was all opened on the seventh of January, twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. Yes, ma'am. Before that time, you did not hold any accounts for the ex president. No, we didn't. All right. Well, let's have the account, so they share the same account opening package? Yes, yes. That was the only thing that went into the account? Yes, yes. 170,000? Yes, yes. What was the balance as of 23rd of January 2017? As of 23rd January, the balance was 1,277,889.63. Bolaje pointed out that one Alaji Usman Sise, a former Deputy Permanent Secretary Office of the President, facilitated the opening of the accounts being highlighted. 
while mentioning the name of the former Vice President Isa Dunjai Sedi at a cost signatory to an account worth over $500 million belonging to the Operation Save the Children Foundation. This is the Operation Save the Children Foundation account. Do you have it? Yes, sir. Is it only one account or more than one? Ma? Dollar, say, and dollar, two. There are two, two accounts. accounts? Yes, sir. Currencies? Dollar, say, and dollars. Dollar, say, and dollars? Yes, sir. All right. Um, account opening information? I have them here. I have with them with Yes. Who are the signatories to the account? Okay. The, the two signatories are Lady Zenab Jame, the former first lady, and then the former vice president, Aisaitu Asatu Njai Seidi. Kumar Jadama, reporting for GRTS. And to today's sittings at the National Assembly, where deputies debated the 2017 Constitutional Review Commission Bill, the afternoon generated a heated debate among deputies following the presentation of the bill by the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Honorable Abubakar Batambedo. If passed, it will pave the way for the appointment for the Constitutional Commission, whose mandate will be to come up with a new constitution. Deputies spend a marathon seven hours uh, debating in, in what is uh, perhaps the most important undertaking in the New Gambia. The Kofi Annan International for Peacekeeping and Training Center is currently engaging stakeholders in the peace and security sector on a two-day seminar on national and regional infrastructure for a program is anchored on establishing networks that seeks to promote peace and stability in West Africa. H.N. Silva tells us more. The renowned Kofi Annan International for Peacekeeping Training Center is leading the advocacy for peace and conflict resolution with its National Infrastructure for Peace in Echo States initiative which aims at building very formidable structures of peace in the sub-region using these participants as building blocks. The structure that will do this at the national level is what we call the infrastructure for peace. It can be a body, it can be a group of bodies, it can be an arrangement. As long as it's able to play this role, that's what you want. The participants are drawn from civil and security sector with a vast know-how on current social and security issues in the sub-region. They are already looking keen and focused on the program, likewise the subjects under discussion. That being the case, um, the Gambia will really benefit um, from such an exercise, um, which hopefully uh, will build the capacity of both actors on both the government side and uh, non-governmental um, actors or non-state actors. It's staging in the Gambia organizers say, it's no coincidence, cognizant of the ongoing transition brought about by the historic democratic change of government, rolling out this program is meant to strengthen this. We chose Gambia because we all know what has happened in the recent past. And so by hosting it here, it means more Gambians can attend. The National Security Advisor Momodu Baji and Evanessa Aseido of the Equus Commission applauds Kofi Annan and his institution for the initiative, adding it fits well with the sub-regional efforts to bring lasting peace. We are therefore grateful for your consideration of the Gambia for this very special and important meeting at this stage of our national reconstruction process. For a country with an enviable track record of peaceful coexistence, efforts to sustain such gains is further proof of the commitment of government and its partners to promote this more cherished national treasure. Etienne Silva, DRTS News. The Network Against Gender-Based Violence, formed by 13 institutions, aimed at eradicating gender-based violence and empowering women and girls. As Aminata Sanyang reports, 
The organization Sunday concluded its countrywide sensitization on gender-based violence, among other issues. Personnel of the Network Against Gender-Based Violence have been preaching messages of gender-based violence, forced and early marriage and other forms of domestic abuse to the people of Lower, Central River Region and North Bank Region. Basically, we are sensitizing people on the laws of this nation, the laws that our National Assembly members have passed, that we as Gambian we have to honor, that we have to respect, we have to abide by. And these are the laws um, such as the Domestic Violence Act that is prohibiting any forms of domestic violence. Inspired by the hashtag 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, the activists began a two-week countrywide tour from November 25th to December 10th, 2017. We are commemorating 16 days of activism. First, we are celebrating and recognizing the efforts of women across the globe. Um, the, 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 the significant contribution women, especially government women, are making towards national development. But yet still we reflect our mind to, 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 to look at where the gaps are, what still needs to be done. Yes, a lot of work has been done in, in fighting against gender-based violence or violence against women and girls, but we all know that a lot more still needs to be done. The caravan, which includes youth activists from different institutions, conducted a series of meetings during the tour. The caravan was divided into Team A and B, which visited all regions of the Gambia. I'm empowering my fellow young women and girls. I'm challenging them to take this opportunity to make best use of these laws that have been implemented by the government and also to report any cases they've seen on either FGM, child marriage or any sexual violence against women. The advocates also managed to attract a huge crowd of women and children in the visited communities. Mordramin Davis, a prominent activist, reminded the people that domestic violence against women is a violation of human rights and that the act is also punishable by law. If you look at the issue of wife violence, or intimate partner violence, we, we, we call it. If you look at the multiple indicator clusters of the mix of 2010, I mean, we went around talking to women about the effects of wet bartering and everything. It, it's difficult for us as, as activists, you know, some women would come to us and try to justify wet bartering. You ask women, can your husband beat you, for instance? They'll tell you, yes. Yes, my husband can beat me, let's say, if I cook and burn the food, for instance. But can you beat your husband? Oh, no, then my children wouldn't prosper or succeed, for instance. And we, we saw to it that the issue of wet bartering is doing or causing a lot of harm to a lot of families. Memon Jami of the Gender and Child Welfare Unit of the Gambia Police Force reminded the people of the laws enacted for FGM in early marriage. The Lady Councillor for the Dankungu Ward Fatu Fati said wife battering and FGM have significantly reduced in average, thanks to the advocacy programs and activists. Another fruitful stop was in Jaren Upper Basic School where students were sensitized. Similar sentiments were echoed in Boykamaba, in Chakunda, in CRR. Hashtag 16 days of activism is used by activists within this period to impart information about gender-based violence, FGM, forced marriage and a host of issues. Activists in this caravan are pleased that the information shared will significantly bring about massive change in the communities. Reporting for GRTS News, I am Aminata E. Sane. Meanwhile, the Ding Ding Yurawa Federation Organization and affiliation to Child Fund the Gambia recently sensitized the community of Sunchu Suri and its environs on the effects of child marriage and gender-based violence in society. Sedu Kamara has more on that. This forum is meant to raise awareness and draw attention to the harmful effect of child marriage and other related subjects around gender-based violence in society. For village Alcalo Sedu Jalo, there is no greater mistake than withdrawing a child from school for marriage at an early age. The village head assault child activists at the event of his support in the fight against child marriage and other forms of gender-based violence. Federation manager Alumendi stressed the need to raise attention to problems affecting children 
and noting that awareness raising campaign should also focus on the negative effects of harmful traditional practices. We need to enlighten people. We need to broaden their horizon of understanding the implications surrounding gender-based violence. And this is why we're looking at the school uh, component and we're also looking at the community component. And in this manner, we feel that if the young ones at school level understand the dynamics of gender, these are people who are going to be future leaders of this country. So if they know the dynamics of gender and they know how to mainstream it in their thinking, in their approaches and their, in their actions, we feel that we'll have a very good Gambia tomorrow. Activists also discuss the culture of silence and all parents to conduct dialogue with their children. Lawmakers play a crucial role in enforcing the law and investigation cases to bring those responsible for abuse and violence to justice. If the laws of the land is talking about uh, the issue of gender, but they are not implementing it, and people are doing it, and they go scot free, do you think it will stop? No. But if the laws of the land, the people who has the power to uh, to protect that law, and they are implemented to the letter, Islam said, if you want to help your friend, tell him the truth. If Gambia government want this, it will stop. Let them implement the laws of the land to the letter. That was the reason why the laws are made. For Umi Sisoko, an activist who has dedicated her life to fighting for children's rights and said gender-based violence is a serious crime which mostly affected girls and children. She noted that the women should be empowered to first and speak out about the abuse and violence they constantly encounter. The day scheme could be more relevant according to the representative of Child Fund, Alaji Jane. This is the 26th year of the event and it has grown to include participation from more than 90 countries and more than 700 organizations. The, the theme of the 16 days campaign includes the International Day of um, Elimination of Violence Against Women, November 21st. Drama performance highlighting the negative effects of child marriage rounded up the forum, which is being taken across the country to raise more awareness on the prevalence of gender-based violence and the need to address it. Sadio Kamara, GRTS News. A sub-regional workshop on the management of bonga fish in the West African sub-region is underway in Banjul. The forum is organized by the Department of Fisheries in collaboration with the UNDP and European Union. Kajetu Jawara tells us more. After days of fishing activities, the fourth edition of the Gambia International Board Fishing Competition wraps up with this uh, cocktail engagement here at the Swiss Tavern, where more than 10 participants will be officially um, recognized as per their participation in the 2017 version of the event. It was an atmosphere of fun as Gambia Tourism Board's Licensing and Enforcement Director Momoduba announced the results of the latest international board fishing competition. Who is this year's champion with 1,000 pounds? Ibrahim Adrani! The overall winner, Ibrahim Adrani, was filled with excitement alongside his cash prize of more than 1,000 pounds. I've been doing this game for more than 20 years and I have great records. I respect it and I love it. And when I was invited in this game, I was very happy. They are very smart the way they organize things. And, um, we are very, very happy about this. Um, it's not only about the money, but it's the competition putting people together. Fondly called Barracuda Man for bagging a Barracuda fish on day three of the competition, the importer was equally delightful. We've been hearing him call the Barracuda Man. Barracuda, Barracuda Man. man. Barracuda man. Okay. I've entered this year for the first time. I've had the best time ever. In 20 years, I've caught my first Barracuda, which, which was nice. It was good. Caught some fantastic butterfish, and I've had an absolute brilliant time, and I'm booked in for next year. Another participant, Jamil reveals that such tourism activities are vital for the Gambia's underutilized river. 
Well, for Gambia tourism, I think the Gambia River has been very much underutilized. And thanks to the fishing tournament, we're exposing more of the Gambians getting more involved in the fishing. Tourists are becoming more aware of this tournament. It's becoming an international event. And hopefully in the near future, we're going to see some great, great success coming from this uh, fishing championship. Organizing committee members, including Bernard Westgard, are hopeful is for the fishing activity. I think everybody is very happy. Uh, fishing has been very competitive. We've had plenty of fish, so everyone's gone away happy. And we want more next year. We've got the basics now, uh, basics of a, a real good competition. All we do now is need to expand it. And we want 50 anglers. That's the target, 50 anglers, 20 boats. While hoping for more enhanced competitions, organizers thanked all and sundry for their contributions in the 2017 Gambia International Board Fishing Competition. Muru Bajan, GRTS. We apologize for bringing you that um, wrong report. Well, that was the just concluded 2017 episode of the Gambia International Board Fishing Competition. The CEO of Vision Development Foundation has donated checks amounting to $735,000 to the people of Pakala Demba Holi in Upper Nyomi. The presentation ceremony was held on Saturday during celebrations marking adoption of Modu Turo Dabo as father of the village. Sally Jaju tells us more. Active for more than two decades, the Vision Development Foundation continues to deliver on its objective to support the poor and less privileged. And Foundation CEO Moduturo Dabo intends to take it even higher with the first undertaking that aims to render humanitarian assistance to every community in the Gambia without asking for anything in return. On Saturday, Mr. Dabo donated $500,000 to the community of Pakalademba Hole. This is earmarked for the digging of a borehole in the Upper Nyomi community. The sum of $25,000 went to the Berendi Women's Garden and $100,000 to the youth of Pakalademba Hole. Another $50,000 was also donated to the Lower Basic School of Pakala. $62,000 to be distributed among the 62 mugs in the Upper Nyomi District. On a focused philanthropic mission, Moduturo Dabo reaffirmed his commitment towards complementing government's development efforts in all sectors. The donation he noted was in line with his foundation's principles of giving back to the society while expressing gratitude to the community for the trust and confidence bestowed on him and for choosing him. him as their honorary father, Mr. Dabo assured them of more support Sego Fofona is the PRO of Vision Development Foundation. Vision Development Foundation is an NGO and uh, at our level, at the board level, we have a range of programs that we are doing and uh, Child's Mentorship is one of our programs we do but uh, community development is key because when we look at our activity we have many communities that we normally go into. We have road re rehabilitation, we have health center rehabilitation, support to police stations, infrastructural development, water for the communities, and so many other projects. Any area that the community is very concerned with, we are going to look onto that and give a support. The National Assembly member for Open Yomi, Omar S. Dabo, and Dr. Njoguba, former Secretary General, all hailed Mr. Dabo for his continuous humanitarian support to the Gambians. The monies the duo added will go a long way in uplifting the lives and livelihoods of the community. Several speakers, including the chief of Opanyomi, Momodu Chati Cham, youth leader Abdullah Sow, and women representative Sika Sedi, amongst others, all thank Mr. Dabo for honoring their invitation. They also appealed to government and other philanthropists to help construct their feeder routes and provide them with more development initiatives. <laughs> Reporting for GRTS News, I am Sally Jaju. 
We'll be back with the sports.